Yeah, I saw that too. Hey y'all, this is Port 1119. We're at uh, another abandoned mine site in the Missouri Ozarks. We are currently at the site of what I believe was the Missouri Cobalt Company number two shaft. Uh, this was a cobalt, lead, and copper mine active through 1961. We are at we are on an access road leading into the rest of the mine. It's the Madison Mine site. It's the name for the rest of the site. It's now owned by Anschutz Mining Company. Big environmental lawsuit with the Sarco over that whole dust up. Uh, anyways, what we have here, I believe this is the mounting system for the hoist. The shaft was right there. Uh, this mound here, the shaft was filled and uh, your equipment to move the skips and a, and a cage, if any, here was mounted on these foundations. There's numerous other foundations around here. Most any building siding was hauled off for scrap. And there's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful samples uh, such as these. They're turquoise green. So another great one. That's some kind of uh, breccia with copper in it. And iron. Yeah, definitely. The soil around here is extremely iron rich. There's a lot of that too. Uh, we are going to move on towards the rest of the mine and uh, get back to you in just a minute. So uh, we continued down the mine road, went about 25 through here, which was a, a fun time trying to uh, get through any mud. I uh, this finally decided to stop here. This is place marked on Google Earth as a freshwater lake. Which, yeah, there appears to be a freshwater lake here. I already went through one puddle, or a puddle of mud this size. Don't really want to feel like, don't really want to do three more. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and hoof it from here on out. And we'll cut back once we get to the number one shaft. Alright, so... <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, so we walked a ways. I uh, found a deer stand, lots of tracks, and some ice that ain't melted off yet. And this is the Madison Mines uh, main tailings pond. It looks kind of like sand flats. This is kind of reminiscent of what we saw uh, hiking into Federal Number no. Four Mill. Um, yeah, that stuff's most likely contain most likely contains lead, cobalt, other heavy metals. Uh, we're not going to stick around on this too long. Uh, looks like lots of folks go off road in here. But yeah, I don't want to stay around here too long. Good thing though is that because we have a lot of snow melt, it is, well, it's damp enough to keep any dust down. So there's basically going to be no risk of airborne particulate containing heavy metals blowing off of this. So judging by the fact that believed to be the access road from the number one shaft it was actually logging roads and did not continue as far as we needed it to. We decided to hoof it across the tailings pile, which basically looks like the Badlands. Uh, Frank, I don't know if you're going to watch this video, but I bet this looks kind of familiar. We are heading up to the five shaft the uh, National Lead Company's old smelter. Um, that lake over there to the west, I believe that is coming out of a decline that was started in 1961 when they closed this mine to pull equipment out for salvage or resale. Um, it was actually one artesian at some point, and the result was cobalt-infused groundwater in people's wells. We don't want to drink that. So this right here is the uh, most interesting part so far. I say that because stuff happens at these mines. Um, so right here we are looking at a berm that contains this body of water here. Um, there is a pass through there that used to have a bridge over it that is marked with stop signs and uh, railings and the stop signs are shot to shit because of Missouri. So if we look down here, watch closely, watch closely, we wind up finding this this dead ends here we're pretty sure this is the decline and that all of this water is rich in heavy metals again because of missouri 
Uh, this was filled in around 2003 from what I heard. Um, before then, it was just freely uh, emitting mine water because the water table shifted upwards. I don't know how well you can see the wetlands in there, or if you can hear me right now. But yeah, that is the Madison Mines decline. We have continued walking the entire way from Madison Mine. I'm now going to zoom in. Uh, hopefully it is visible on camera. Smokestack. Smelter that used to operate here. That was dynamited at some point in the last recent, I don't know, last 20 years or so. Uh, pretty cool looking. We'll get a bit closer. I'm not feeling too good about crawling over the smelter, though. Well, we once again have eyes on the National Lead Company smelter. And, in addition to that, we have eyes on the Madison Mines Mill. Uh, you can kind of see it. Uh, I think it might be in defilade uh, relative to those trees. And you can see a fenced-off area. I believe that is the shaft. So we're going to make our way down there and bring you some more awesome footage of the Madison Mine. This is a lower angle uh, looking onto the roof of the Madison Mines Mill. There are some wooden structures and other foundations behind me. We will check those out after we further explore the mill. I believe one of them might have been an ore bin. Um, this is your pretty typical mill structure. You have uh, mounts for ball mills um, and equipment such as that. Boy, the most interesting part about this site is how intact it is. We uh, would have expected this to have disappeared some time ago. But I suppose because Fredericktown is still... Uh, pretty small little town, it gets to stay. We are now under the Madison Mines Mill, inside the foundations. The uh, mill itself appears to have been a brick structure, and that was all torn down. Um, this is not immensely stable looking because of uh, all the spalling of concrete off of the uh, foundations. We can still see a lot of the rebar in there. There's debris everywhere. Uh, we're not going to go any further in here because we do not have any kind of driving reason to do so. Um, yeah, so I believe that based on the pipes and uh, hosing that we're seeing, this would have been used to supply water, compressed air, other utilities to the mill equipment. We just came in through this there's a doorway here. Uh, Gail, you got anything you want to add on this? Um, noticing more ore samples around here. Yeah, Gail found a beautiful kind of forest green, we've copper sample here. Um, around this and the other shaft that we saw, there's a massive amount of uh, small copper samples that have corroded to uh, teal green. They're, they're absolutely beautiful. The samples of copper we haven't seen except between, sorry, we haven't seen here. We haven't seen between here and the other shaft. We've seen them at each location, but the tailings pond was covered with lead and iron only. And possibly some copper. Some of it was the same color I've seen as a uh, copper dissolved in hydrochloric acid. We're not going to go as in-depth on this mill as we did with Federal Number 4 because this one does not look to be entirely stable. We're not going to risk that. Um, it's not worth our safety. Um, so we're going to look over the rest of the site. There's still some pl plenty of awesome stuff here to check out. There's a side view into the, into the mill. You can see the uh, pretty nicely inner grid gridded supports for the mill floor. Um, that had to support hundreds of tons of machinery easy. Uh, what we're standing on here, uh, these were vats for flotation separation of ore. Just the foundations are left right now. Um, seeing as we're finding so much wood around them, I'm gonna guess that the vats are actually made of wood, which is interesting, given as this was 
a fairly modern trackless mine based on engineering documents I have read about it. I don't know, it's a bit of a, a bit of an odd sight. This is a, a hybrid of old and new almost. And then this right here did not look circular at first glance, but upon further investigation, it certainly is. I see that it is a, another flotation pad. What do you find? Crushed oil. Yeah. Yeah. This stuff crushes real easy. I'm going to guess that um, from the, fl the uh, flotation process, this was uh, silt left over from it. And then once they demolished the mine, they uh, left it all here. A very, very cool site. So this is a cistern of sorts. Um, it led to the flotation vats, probably the water source for them. Not too much left. Um, obviously, it still leads to some sort of water source. We're not sure what. I'm guessing it drains the tailings pile. Quite possibly, yeah. And a lovely amount of ice here, even though it's 60 degrees today. Haven't seen ice in anywhere for about a week, really. All right. And that concludes the mill. Now, regrettably, or fortunately, it depends on what side of the removing warning labels to bait you stand on. Uh, this shaft has been capped uh, and fenced. I'd say that just one of those would suffice, but anyways. Uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty standard two compartment shaft with a manway or a manway or a cage alongside the skips. Um, there's a couple other uh, foundations back there. I'm guessing that one of them is the head frame support and the other one is the winch or the hoist mount, the hoist mount being the furthest from me. This is one of the only mines we've come to where we can positively identify shafts, which is very neat. I'm going to pan back to the mill. The mill's up here. And then there's the uh, service floor that we were exploring. It's monolithic solid concrete, a lot of that, which is impressive and must have cost a fortune. There uh, used to be chain link fencing around a large portion of this site. We believe it was removed to facilitate facilitate tailings capping and uh, other remediation work. We're not complaining because it means that uh, we can pretty easily access the site. We came in the long way walking across the tailings piles. There was a short way, but it appeared to have been gated. On Google Earth, at least, we didn't check it out. Yeah, this is not a, a difficult site to access. There's also this here. This actually could be the shaft, because it's uh, closer in line. I will adjust position to see. And it's closer in line with these foundations here. Uh, however, I believe that either one of these are still decent candidates. A pretty recent EPA survey indicated that there was a head frame here, so it's either a wood structure in the woods behind us that we're going to check out next, or it was removed. I don't see any scrap metal that would indicate uh, a head frame being removed from here. I don't think they would have been able to get all of it out, so we're going to keep looking. I'm going to wrap up our exploration of the Madison mine here. We are a bit east of the rest of the mill, and uh, this appears to be, based on the abutments, uh, some kind of rail transloading point, dump point, or whichever. Uh, it's not stable enough to get up on top of it. This has been a very interesting mine, very extensive. We're going to plan another visit back, because we have not seen anywhere close to the whole facility. There's still uh, another shaft, still the smelter. Lots of stuff to see.
So uh, thanks for watching, y'all. Stay tuned. You will see more videos of abandoned mines in the Missouri Ozarks. See you around.